remember that this is the case in the ideal world but what happens is actually by increasing VDS other things happen to the channel and one important thing is what we call the channel modulation effect what does that mean? let's show you that in the animation here what happens by increasing VDS higher than the overdrive voltage the channel length decrease by increasing VDS even more than the bench of voltage the channel length decrease well if VDS becomes greater than VGS minus the threshold voltage then the channel length decrease to L prime that decrease in the channel length is modulated is correlated to VDS so if you increase VDS the channel length decrease so that's why we call a channel modulation effect the channel length is affected by VDS if you increase VDS channel length decrease where L prime is less than L this condition is always true because by increasing VDS the channel length will be less than the actual effective length of the channel then ID the drain current will equal to one half mu n c o x w over l prime not over l over l prime that is the effective length times vgs minus the threshold voltage squared we just came back to the original equation for the saturation region and we replaced l by l prime because the channel length now changed now we can say that since l prime will equal to l minus delta l the following approximation can be used we can say that 1 over L prime is approximately equal to 1 plus delta L over L this whole thing divided by L also note that delta L over L is proportional with VDS so let's go over here and see what do we say what we are saying is the decrease in the channel length the decrease is delta L how much did I lose in the channel length delta L over the overall channel is proportional to VDS so by increasing VDS I increase the losses in the channel length delta L increase and we go on to say that this will equal to lambda times VDS whereas lambda is the channel modulation index so delta L over L is proportional to lambda then 1 over L prime which we said that is approximately equal to 1 plus delta L over L over L so now what we can do we can say that VDS when it's greater than VGS minus the threshold voltage which means I am in the saturation region for this condition the current equation becomes ID will equal to one half mu n c o x w over L times VGS minus the threshold voltage squared times 1 plus lambda times VDS basically I substituted for 1 over L prime to be 1 over L times 1 plus lambda times VDS that's all what I did this equation is very powerful you must memorize it in fact that as I said earlier I never forgot this equation since I was an undergrad also lambda which is the modulation index is inversely proportional to L so you can increase lambda by decreasing L so lambda is very large for a small device that is important which means that it's more non-ideal that means the non-ideal effect of the voltage current relationship is more dominant in smaller devices or faster devices we can explore that later on because smaller devices means a smaller capacitance so you tend to have larger lambda for smaller devices and that affects the gain and so forth we can explore them later on as we continue through the course
So if you double L, lambda drops by half. And this is an, an example. Now what happens is, by increasing L, you increase the capacitance and the device becomes slower. But you can always control lambda by controlling L. So let's state that again. The trade-offs are area and the speed versus higher gain. We will explore that when we cover amplifiers in subsequent lectures. If you plot VDS versus ID, for a particular VGS, you start with the linear region and then until you hit saturation. But by increasing VDS, the current increase, right? Because now you have 1 plus lambda times VDS. So if you increase VGS, the current will increase linearly in the saturation region, but at a different slope. And then if you increase VGS to another value, let's say VGS2, you have a higher current in the triad region. When you hit the saturation region, the current will increase linearly. And over here, we will assume that alpha VDS over alpha ID is constant, but that is not always the case. So basically, we will assume that lambda is independent of VGS. We are assuming here that lambda does not change by changing VGS. In reality, it does change as a function of VGS.